In the history of pro football, there have been over 9,000 games played. Spanning over 70 seasons, there have been over 41,000 touchdowns scored. Here then are the 100 greatest touchdowns of all time. It's free! He's on his way! Cutting back across the 25, 30. There's a block, 30, there's a block, 40. the 100 greatest touchdowns in NFL history. There's never been a show like it. And where do you begin? Well, I'm Steve Sable, and I'm standing in the NFL Films Library, surrounded by 41,000 touchdowns dating back to the 1920s. Now, how do you decide just what makes a touchdown great? Well, it could be a last-second game-winning score, or it could be one of these bone-jarring runs by Earl Campbell or John Mackey where they blast through a half a dozen tacklers on their way to the end zone. Or it could be Gail Sayers or Hugh McElhenney weaving 70 yards through the shifting dangers of a broken field. Or it could be one of those bizarre follies that just defy explanation. Well, how did we decide? Well, we polled the top football writers in the country. Then we mixed in our opinions, and we've come up with a film on the 100 greatest touchdowns in NFL history. And we're going to start with a little bonus. This is a thrilling adventure that came up just a little short of the end zone. In 1958, the Ramsdell Schaffner, number 29, a player noted more for his blazing speed than his nifty moves, circumnavigated the Los Angeles Coliseum. The spectacular catch and carry was about to be rewarded with a touchdown, but the referee came up short, and so did the luckless Schaffner. Quarterback John Forcade of the New Orleans Saints authored one of the wildest plays in pro football history against the Rams in 1987. Up, throwing deep down the near sideline. It's going to be picked off back to the 40, 45, to the 50, to the 45 of the Saints. The ball comes loose. Another Ram has picked it up. This is a lineman. This one's going to be seen on the highlights for a long, long time. 28 looking to lateral. The ball goes loose and the Saints have it. It's Forcade. He's got it at the 40, 45. 4 Kate's frolic had nothing on this volley in 1964. On a wild scoring play, Ed Brown's pass bounces off two giant defenders and into the hands of Clendon Thomas for a Pittsburgh touchdown. The earliest of our 100 greatest touchdowns came on a 92-yard interception return by the Giants' immortal Ward Cuff against the Redskins in 1938. In 1966, Larry Wilson, the Cardinals Hall of Fame safety, returned this pass 91 yards against the Eagles. The man walking the tightrope in 1970 was the Browns' Bo Scott, and his high-wire act resulted in a 66-yard touchdown against the Raiders. The 
Vikings, Rich Gannon proved the value of a running quarterback against the Cardinals in 1991. Gannon pump fake once, now pressure in the middle, spins around, gets away from it, got room to run. Super run! Weaving in and out of the 15, tries to get wide at the 10, cuts it back to the 5, touchdown! Rich Gannon! One of the greatest touchdowns happened in a 1950 snowstorm. Sammy Bob throws a flat pass. Looks like it's incomplete. No! Lauren Lahr catches it lying flat on his back. Gets up, scampers over the goal line to score on the year's weirdest interception. The NFL definition for crazy may be this botched extra point try by the 1985 Seahawks. They feel it by the Rams. Craig gets it back in the 20. Throws oh, it no. in the I don't believe it! Oh. 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 When the Redskins' Dick Todd, number 41, broke a 75-yard touchdown against the Giants in 1940. It proved to be the only score on a punt return in the Eastern Division that season. While long touchdowns are exciting, sometimes the greatest scores occur in the most confined spaces. Jack drops straight back, sets up, gets protection, looks, looks, throws to the sideline, it's caught by Ryzen, Ryzen is hit, struggles, trying to get back, reverses, comes to the near side, breaks it back up the sideline, out of bounds, touchdown! He didn't go out of bounds! In 1951, the 49ers' Joe Perry proved to the Rams why he was nicknamed the Jet. For acrobatics and style points, the Oilers' Ernest Gibbons registered a perfect 10 in 1989. Great to Gibbons inside the first down marker. What a play! I can't believe this play! The 10 to 5, leads into the end zone, silver slaps, touchdown Oilers! In 1962, the Browns traded number 49 Bobby Mitchell to the Redskins. Guess what happened the first time the two teams met that year? Proof positive that revenge is the sweetest poison. Bobby takes a sneak pass late in the game and dupes his way through the entire Brown secondary to score the winning touchdown. The Broncos' Lionel Taylor defined the term catch and run against the Raiders in 1965. The Bears' Ed Sprinkle number seven was labeled a hitman. The victim was the Browns' Otto Graham, and to the victor went the spoils. In battle, sometimes you must retreat before you can advance. For the Bears' Eddie Macon, a few steps backwards meant 63 yards forward against the Redskins in 1953. Hey, wait, that's the wrong way, Eddie. That's better. Now just watch the rest of this spectacular run. Now you have it, now you don't. Aptly describes this play between the Jets and the Browns in 1985. Back to pass, looking long. He heaves it down the middle, and it's going to be intercepted. And then it's grabbed away by Sony. Runs into the end zone for the touchdown. Don Rogers had the ball. And then it was ripped away. Unbelievable. Number nine, Sonny Jurgensen, is a Hall of Fame quarterback. This sensational 80-yard touchdown by the Eagles' Timmy Brown in 1962 helped put him there. In 1975, the guts and the heart of the Oilers, Ronnie Coleman, produced the game-winning touchdown against the Dolphins. The longest interception return in 49er history belongs to number 27, Alvin Randolph, who was a rookie safety in 1966 when he produced this masterpiece against the Bears.
The Rams touchdown Tommy Wilson lived up to his catchy moniker on this classy cross-country touchdown against the Lions in 1958. In 1964, the Bears' Rudy Bukic threw up a prayer of a pass that, by divine intervention and the divine hands of number 47, Johnny Morris, ended up in the 49ers' end zone. The Browns of 1980 were known as the Cardiac Kids because quarterback Brian Seip pulled off heart-stopping plays like this one against the Seahawks. Running back Essex Johnson of the Bengals demonstrated to the Eagles why he was considered one of the greatest open field runners of the 70s. When you think of great Dolphin backs, you think of Zonka, Kick, and Morris. Yet the longest run in Dolphin history was this 77-yard burst by Leroy Harris against the Colts in 1977. The Buccaneers' Gary Anderson will not end up in the Hall of Fame, but runs like this will. Anderson goes to his right, cuts it inside. Anderson to the 45, to the 50. Anderson cuts it back to the 40. Anderson to the 35, to the 30. Anderson to the 25, to the 20. Gary Anderson to the 10-yard line, to the 5. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! In 1983, a hurdle champion and 49er receiver, Ronaldo Skeets Nehemiah, reached for the gold and found fool's gold instead. The Falcons' Blaine Geisen scooped up the real treasure, the football, and found six points. Trailing 20 to 17, Joe Namath hit Eddie Bell with the 83-yard game winner with less than a minute to play against the Colts in 1972. While Bell snatched victory from almost certain defeat, one of the greatest thefts in NFL history occurred in 1949, when the Eagles' Russ Kraft stripped the ball from Hall of Famer Crazy Legs Hirsch of the Rams. The greatest thieves of modern times were the 1992 49ers and receiver Mike Sherrard. He's down, he fumbles the ball! He was already down, I believe, but then it's picked up by Sherrard! Touchdown, 49ers! And it's a touchdown! Oh, we've had a couple unbelievable plays in this game. But the greatest pulling rabbits out of the hats play was this classic pulled off by the Bucks in 1986. Murray. Intercepted by Todd Bell! Bell laterals it over now to Richard. Oh, no, 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 oh, no. And it's oh. by Tampa Bay down the right oh, sideline. Sid Kreflin's going to go all the way for the touchdown! Determination was the mark of this 1973 touchdown by the Dolphins' Charlie Lee against the Colts. The Cowboys' Timmy Newsom often played second fiddle to the great Tony Dorsett, but he played first violin against the Oilers in 1982. Charlie Taylor was a rookie running back in 1964. But this kind of play against the Eagles demonstrated why the Redskins moved him to wide receiver, where he ran all the way to the Hall of Fame. Another rookie running sensation was the Raiders' Bo Jackson in 1987. Off to Bo, off the left side, gets to the outside, first down, he shoots to the 20, the 30, they'll never catch him, he's at the 50, the 30, the 20, count him folks, silver and black, Bo Jackson, holy Toledo, 90 yards. 
For great opening days, witness this 1965 piece of brilliance by the 49ers Gary Lewis against the Bears. For being in the right place at the right time, consider this 1984 play by the Colts' Ray Butler. Back to throw is Mike Pagel. Rolls away from the pressure. He comes back right. Looks down the field. He's looking for some help. Throws it over the middle. And it's caught. It might be a touchdown. Oh. Oh, it's up in the air. The immaculate reception. Oh. On the 1991 Bills, Kenneth Davis was not a starter. On many other teams, he would have been a star. 35. Oh. This play vaulted the Miami Dolphins into Super Bowl VI. Safety Dick Anderson intercepted a Johnny Unitas pass, and behind seven perfect blocks, clinched a shutout victory in the AFC Championship. On opening day in 1978, the Dolphins' Delvin Williams set sail against the Jets on one of the most breathtaking runs of the decade. The 49ers' Abe Woodson was a track star in college, and those skills made him one of the greatest return men in NFL history. This 96-yarder came against the Lions in 1961. In 1990, the Chiefs sacked Seahawks quarterback Dave Craig nine times, an NFL record seven of them by number 58 Derek Thomas. But on the last play of the game, with Kansas City leading 16 to 10, it was the gutty Craig who remained standing. You have to hit a seam here. You've got to find a seam. He's wow. back. Thomas is there. He slipped away from Thomas. Craig back. Throws it. Yeah. Held in the end zone. Yeah. It's Touchdown. 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 Seahawks. It is caught in the end zone. The Seahawks are going to win the ball game. It's Kansas. He got it. Unbelievable. On Thanksgiving Day 1974, the Cowboys' great Roger Staubach was knocked out of the game and replaced by unheralded rookie Clint Longley. Under the harshest scrutiny, Longley tossed a touchdown pass to Drew Pearson in the closing seconds, which defeated the arch-rival Redskins 24-23. Football is above all a team sport, but often victory depends on individual brilliance, like the Bengals' Lamar Parrish's punt return against the Browns in 1974. The University of Oklahoma has produced many great running backs, but none more explosive than the Browns' Greg Pruitt, who mesmerized the Rams in 1978. They called him the General and quarterback Bob Lee led his Falcons to an upset victory over the favored Vikings with his dream of a play in 1973. The Chiefs Warren McVay was called Mac the Knife and he cut a cruel path through the dark night in the Bengals in 1969. The Saints' Charlie Brown had few shots at stardom, but he made the most of this chance against the Steelers in 1968.
Another one-shot wonder was the Lions' Larry Walden. But what a shot he fired. A weaving, twisting, and turning 60-yard slow-motion extravaganza against the Green Bay Packers in 1971. While Walton was never a star, the Cardinals' versatile Terry Metcalf was. He was a runner, a receiver, and a return specialist. And his specialty was spectacular plays, like this one against the Browns in 1974. In the pure sense of great individual performances, one man against many, this play by the Steelers' Roy Jefferson against the Cardinals is arguably the best ever. of touchdowns in this library, only one in about 400 made the cut to become one of the top 100 of all time. And of course, when it comes to agreeing on which touchdowns to feature, well, there's bound to be some controversy. You know, how can you include this touchdown and not include that one? And why is this one in the top 20 and that one isn't? Well, there's one thing that we all could agree on, and that's that the final 50 touchdowns are even more spectacular than the first 50. So here we go, let's continue with the greatest run by bruising Hall of Fame running back, Marion Motley. Graham back to pass, shakes off George Nixit and slings one out in the left flat to Marion Motley. And the Hawking fullback hits with the far of a steam engine as he knocks over the Steelers like 10 pins on a bowling alley. Motley drops his helmet to the crowd as he jogs over the goal line to give the Browns a 17. Somehow Motley kept his head. And 31 years later, it was hats off to Lynn Kane, who overran the eventual world champion 49ers in 1981. In 1967, Jack Snow's spectacular tip-of-the-ball catch preserved a tie in Baltimore, enabling the Rams to win the Coastal Division title. Snow's sticky fingers did in the Colts, whose butter fingers actually helped them later in 1981. Landry, there it is. The kick is blocked. And Landry tried to recover and rolls free. The Colts have it. It's going to be pulled out of bounds at the lateral the round. Here's Landry. Landry is going in for a, a touchdown. That's the wildest play in the history of the league. They played volleyball. Boy, I'll tell you, if they worked on that play, they all have their master's degree. Oh. Strange twists and surprise endings make for a great story. And in 1964, Jimmy Orr proved they make for a great touchdown. Here's one for the Bucks. Johnny United hits Jimmy Orr on the sideline. Jimmy steers through the Lions for 56 yards before the Lions catch up and jar the ball loose. Raymond Murray tries to pick up the ball but pushes it into the end zone. Lenny Moore finally falls on the ball for a cold touchdown. In 1974, Jackie Smith's spectacular second, third, and fourth effort score helped the Cardinals beat the Cowboys 31 to 28. This play was Smith's greatest ever. 
In 1979, Buffalo's little-known Roland Hooks turned in his greatest game ever. Against the Bengals, Hooks touched the ball four times in the second half and scored on all four carries. Hooks was in the zone on that day, while Hall of Famer Lenny Moore seemed to be in the zone throughout the entire 60s. Perhaps the most elusive runner in the league, Moore gets away from three Packers at the sideline, skips loose from two desperation tackle attempts and scores. Check out the fancy footwork of another Hall of Fame great, Ollie Matson in 1955. Quick thinking by Matson calls for a last second lateral to Dave Mann, who passes on the run to Don Stone. Three years earlier in 1952, Matson launched a bizarre fumble fest and an even more unlikely touchdown. Hold on to your seats for this play, folks, for it'll be a long time before you see another like it. Ollie Matson takes the hand off but fumbles. Everyone gets into the act as a wild scramble follows. Big Bill Fisher finally grabs up the loose ball, and the 250 pound guard goes barreling down the sidelines. Fisher has a fine time before flipping to Billy Cross, who hops into the end zone. In 1978, Earl Campbell turned his 28th Monday night carry into an 81-yard gallop to glory. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. At the 50, he may go. At the 30, at the 20, at the 10, at the 5, touchdown. In 1975, Walter Payton took a pitch out against the Saints. Years later, the NFL's rushing champion would call it his greatest run ever. You won't find Steve Davis's name high on the all-time rushing list, but his touchdown against Denver is right up there. Pound for pound, there are not many backs tougher than the Bengals' 180-pound James Brooks. In 1986, he simply willed himself downfield up in New England. The 50 to the 45, down to the 40 on the far side of the field. He's going to be running. Oh, he's still 20, 15. 10, 5-yard line still on his feet. Plunging, plunging, plunging. Touchdown. Oh, James Brooks just absolutely refused to go down. In 1977, Billy Johnson stared up at the King Dome roof, then took off on another of his serpentine odysseys that leave defenders paralyzed and viewers mesmerized. Twenty years before White Shoes, there was the Wisp, Willie Gallimore, number 28 of the Chicago Bears. Galloping Willie Gallimore, one of the flashiest men to hit the National Football League in years, reverses his field, bobbles the ball, catches it, brushes off tackler after tackler, and finally winds up in the end. In Super Bowl XIV, the difference was lanky, big play receiver John Stallworth. Bradshaw calls out the singles. Remember Pittsburgh, the most dangerous fourth quarter team in the NFL. Now Bradshaw pumping, firing downfield. There goes Stallworth. He pulls it in at the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. And it's the Steelers won their fourth Super Bowl and made history. In 1952, Wilford White made dubious history.